Okay, uh, our next speaker. Dr. Benny, I'm not going to attempt your last name, so I'm going to let you do that so that I don't make a fool of myself. But Dr. Benny is an associate professor of Baylor College of Medicine. Dr. Benny, go ahead. So <clears throat> maybe I can talk by the time he posted. So it's, I think even okay. if the slide is not there, that's fine. Because uh, so basically, um, I'm representing a research side. I'm a, basically, I'm a pharmacist, but uh, I, I work more on um, research side on breast cancer. So my major area is in metabolism and uh, cancer. So I um, we work on how the breast cancer use their energy um, to grow. So what I want to say two things. Uh, one thing is um, just to, to answer yesterday's one of the questions, probably why you want to do it in mice, you know, it's, it's a human, like, you know, because, <laughs> so that's a good question because um, the research is um, something, uh, just for an example, it takes almost 10 to 15 years for you to get a new drug. If you take into the, the time of drug development, because uh, until it comes to a human being, we need to make so much of controls, so much of trials, and uh, phase one, phase two, phase three, and uh, it takes such a long time to reach to a, a, a human uh, study or human treatment. So it's uh, there's a lot of background work need to be done to understand the basic mechanism, and I'm sure none of you will go for a basic mechanism study because <laughs> we never know a chemical is working or not, right? Uh, so we never know a gene is working you know what is the significance of a gene for example BRCA2 we know that it's very important but it's all started from the basic discovery that oh it's affecting so then we try to do a little bit of the higher higher level organism then we will go to the next level organism so that's the way slowly we develop a, a, a gene the effect of a gene or effect of a, a drug so it's a long process so we cannot directly go to a, a human being for and another thing is uh, for example, if you want to study a particular drug, a particular gene, um, so you need to understand the specificity of that gene. We need to make all other things are similar, only only change that particular gene. So in doing such type of studies, we need to do research, you know, on on lower level. Um, for example, uh, yeah, my slide came. So one example is, you know, many of the uh, uh, you know genes. The function of many of the genes first discovered in yeast. So you think you know, why why yeast? Because it's nothing related to human. But to understand the basic function of many of the genes, you know, we started with yeast, uh, or maybe many of the developmental genes we discovered in you know Drosophila, you know the the fruit flies. So it it's it's a it's a long process. Probably you know it's always a confusion for people why you want to do research you know in the lab you know because so, you know for example the COVID. Um, a lot of labs are developing vaccines, so then not everybody is directly going to the human being. So it, it, it there's a long process when it comes to in the final vaccine. So that is so that's something I just wanted to remind you. So regarding the <clears throat> breast cancer, um, so since I work more on metabolism aspect, so I just want to say that it's not the same metabolism for every breast cancer. It's very different, or even any cancer. It's, it's many cancers are depending on. Um, different energy pathways. For example, glucose is not the only energy source for all the tumors. Um, so we published that many cancer depending on fatty acid oxidation. There are tumors depending on glutamine oxidation. So, you know, it's not that, because we have a concept that, you know, uh, uh, it's a, every tumor is depending on one energy pathway. So. Uh, so they just wanted to inform you that it's not that every cancer is fully depending on one pathway. They can eat sugar, they can eat fat, they can eat glutamine. So they, they are, they're depending on different pathways. Um, so that's why I, I just want to tell you that if one, one particular aspect working on one person may not work for your case or, you know, that's, it's, it's very different between people and the cancer to cancer. So another uh, thing I just want to um, inform you that it's a very common practice. People, you know, do dietary modification without 
um, you know, adequate consultation or, you know, understanding what type of tumor they have. So that is something uh, because, as I mentioned, um, the, the diet and energy is very different between tumors to tumor. So you have to be very careful when you do, you know, because it's work for a one person, so it will work for me, you know, that you should not keep that. I can show you one example. I don't want to do science here, but, you know, I just wanted to show one example. Um, so as uh, to continue with the Dr. Park said, we have very limited information about male breast cancer compared to female breast cancers because many of this characterization, many of the you know, genomic studies, many of the treatment development, everything is, is largely depending on the female breast cancer. Of course, they are the, you know, the, the large percentage of breast cancer. So we still need to do a lot to understand more about the male breast cancer, its heterogeneity, tumor behavior, growth pattern, metabolism, energy dependency, all those things. So uh, further studies in male breast cancer is very, very important to address this question because most of the time we interpret or interpolate the data directly from the female breast cancer. So I think that is something we need an aggressive investigation. What is really specific to uh, male breast cancer? So just uh, uh, as a follow-up of what I was telling before, I, I just one example. So what we did is uh, we just, uh, can you go to the next slide, uh, please? Um, so go to the next slide, then we will come back to this one. So that's maybe easy. So we, we, what we did is we just uh, uh, took uh, the patient-derived tumors. So we took the patient-derived tumors and we um, uh, gave it, we, we, we did it in the mouse models. And one group of mouse we treated with high fat diet because many people think, so oh, it's a glucose. If you avoid glucose, um, um, you know, that's the better way to control it. But, you know, these are two, both are, you know, triple negative breast cancers we used here. So one group, both group we treated with the um, high fat diet and low fat diet. You can see both mouse got weight gain when you treat with the high fat diet. Okay, so uh, this is, a is one tumor type and the B is another tumor type. So, uh, and this is the tumor weight of the mouse. So you can see that both in the high fat diet treated mouse, they got weight gain. So now can you go back to the previous slide? So what I want to say that in that tumor A, it, there was no effect on the high fat diet on its growth, but the tumor B had a bigger effect on its growth depending on the diet. So all I wanted to say is, uh, you know, the dietary modifications and uh, all these uh, changes or metabolic changes, what you make in, in your case, may not be same, just like what happened to another person. So you have to be very careful when you follow up of this information and, you know, without characterizing your tumor doing this type of modification. It's both are almost, and if we, if we characterize genetically, they are very similar tumors. Um, you know, they are triple negative breast cancer tumors, but they, they responded very differently, you know, this type of modification. So that's what I was saying. Their food is different, their energy source is different. You know, their response to dietary modifications are different. So you have to be very careful when you just get online information and, you know, just, uh, you know, so you have to get all the right information. That's all I want to say. Okay. I, I think, you know, we are asking questions. Thank after you. That. Any questions that anyone would have? Yeah. Peggy, okay. I do. Um, Dr. Benny, I, I know that they're including more men in uh, clinical trials these days for breast cancer. Okay. My question is, if it is not a study that is directly related to strictly women's issues, say breast to ovarian, that type of thing. Why are men still not included? Even if you, I guess my thinking is if you've got one or two men included and you saw how they reacted to this and their reaction was so much different than women, would that not help push the needle forward a little more to perhaps encourage researchers, you know, other than you and Dr. Ben to understand that, hey, wait a minute, we really need to look at this because this is definitely affecting this group of people differently. I, I'm trying to understand it. 
you know that's the whole point of i came here because uh, you know the, the the major trend is you know people go with the flow because you know the thing is when it comes to breast cancer who was the breast cancer so it's a females it's it's a female disease that's the way generally people con consider it that's what i was trying to tell you emphasis that we need to do a lot more on the male breast cancer because um, you know, each disease go with in that way, like, you know, because when you take it, for example, if there is an infection, so they think, oh, this type of people can get this infection more, you know, that's a, so then the focus will go more towards that direction. But in, when you go that direction, a, 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 a low population, which is still have a serious issue will be ignored in many places, you know, this is, this is what, uh, um, so. Um, so that is the reason I'm telling we need to do a lot on male breast cancer because it's not connected to ovary, it is not connected to many of the um, issues, uh, sorry, any of the physiological characters females has. So they have a, they might have a dr different driving factor, uh, you know, uh, initiation aspect. So how they develop the tumor, what genes are more important in male breast cancer compared to a female breast cancer and what type of metabolism they have. So all these needs to be further studied. So, that, so that's what I was emphasizing. We need to do a lot more on male breast cancer because many times the data, the results and treatment is directly interpreted from the female breast cancer results. So, you know, that needs to be. Uh, so there are two things. One is we don't have much tissues or other things available from male breast cancers because uh, you know, if you, for example, if I have to study, if I have to do a study on a particular gene, uh, what happened that gene is doing or whether the protein is getting upregulated in a cancer or whatever it is. When I look around, I only have female breast cancer available to do the study, right? So if, if I had to do a patient-derived xenograph, for example, that's what we use in our most of our study. That means um, it's not the cell lines uh, in the plastic, but this one is the, the, the tumors we take from the patients, but we only pass through the mouse because they never exposed to plastic, but they always go through the blood circulation. And, you know, that's what, you know, even the study I showed is like that tumor because it's directly from the patient. So that type of tumors we need to represent much better than the plastic. So, but the problem is, uh, where do I get it? You know, how many cases I can get it. So that's, that's, there's a lot of, when I, when it comes to, I know I can represent the research. So I, when it comes to research, we have a big lack of materials and funding to study on male breast cancer. So, you know, we need to get more tissues. We need to characterize more. We need to find out their pathways. Um, so we all are ready to help, definitely ready to help, but uh, we need the tool to do that. So I guess then it leads to the question, who do we need to speak to to make sure that those tumor samples and that tissue is made available? Is it that doctors, uh, I, I'm assuming, I don't know, would have to um, request that tumor tissue and, and surgery? Hey, yeah. Carol, one of the things that I just texted in the chat, this has been an ongoing issue that we have in some ways resolved. And so the NCI and many other um, organizations, ASCO, et cetera, have mandated now that men cannot be excluded from clinical trials of breast cancer unless there's a compelling reason like what you mentioned, because we're studying the ovaries in that population. So that has now been in existence for a few years. In terms of the tissues, so the Translational Breast Cancer Research Consortium, of which my old institution, Hopkins, and my current one, Vanderbilt and Baylor are a part of, did a study that was actually led out of MD Anderson. I may have mentioned to you all a couple of times before where I was the site PI at Hopkins. Um, and so we have done this. It was the first kind of proof of principle that we could come together as a 16 to 18 institution consortia, retroactively consent men with breast cancer to get their tissues. And those samples are now at the TBCRC. Peggy Porter, who's a big pathologist at University of Washington, actually is, um, I think, the controlling site PI for the pathology. And Sharon Giordano was the one at MD Anderson, which I think many uh, people here in the audience know. So, yes. and we are prospectively doing trials using this vehicle where we you know, get 18 institutions where no one institution could enroll enough male breast cancers. Um, and again, I think that that's really going to speak to what Benny was saying, too, that we need to get something together. But uh, the good news is it's been happening and we have some infrastructure already. The bad news is it's still a long way away. Yes. yes. That's a baby step. We're used to that. 
Yeah, we're doing it. And any other questions? And uh, Loba, Dr. Loba. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Dr. Benny. That was really resourceful. So uh, a question. So uh, you showed a graph, right, where high-fat diet versus the standard diet, and you showed that the tumor volume goes down with the high-fat diet when the and and also like what's the end number for that population that you have shown? Is it like one versus one or just a little bit? Uh, because I'm a little um, really striking here that a high-fat diet leads to the lower uh, tumor volume, which is so contradictory to you know what we think about obesity and cancer right uh, so, so lopa you got it opposite <laughs> because okay, actually okay. the high fat diet goes up <laughs> oh it goes up sorry then i just okay. that, then it matches everything but if i'm trying to say in my presentation i was like okay yeah. <laughs> excellent <laughs> excellent uh, any other questions yeah i have a question okay um thank you dr benny for being here uh about recurrence and you were talking about energy sources for these tumors mm -hmm. uh, what kind of advice can you give uh us guys who who have had our treatments already as far as uh, should we stay away from sugar fat uh any any <laughs> any advice on that um you know um so as I mentioned, and even in my title, tumor is different, so you need to find out more about your tumor. So in general thing, what I can say is sugar is definitely a source for most of the cancer. You know, this is definitely because the glycolysis is a common process in almost all the cancers. But not every tumor is fully depending on, uh, you know, because that was, a, that was a, you know, concept which was developed many years, you know, long back. But over the time in our recent studies and recent developments, we realized that it's not only glucose. It can also have fatty acid metabolism. They can give similar type of energy. So in our case, we study group of tumors. Uh, we see that some are fully, uh, uh, largely depend on fatty acid oxidation. So if you, if you know down some of the genes which supply fat to the mitochondria and where the energy is produced, you know, those tumors really shrink. So, but not, is not true with the other tumors, but definitely sugar is supporting, um, even sugar can generate fat. So, you know, sugar is definitely a factor, uh, but um, the old concept of, of everything is sugar and metabolism or glucose and metabolism driving cancer has gone because now not, that's not the concept because tumor can depend on different energy sources. You know, they can depend on glucose, they can depend on amino acids, they can depend on, uh, you know, uh, fat, glutamine. So it, it so the best option is understand the character of your tumor, you know, what type of tumor you have. And um, probably individualizing every tumor is, may not be possible, feasible. You know, at this point of time, we haven't grown so much, you know, because we know a little bit of, and quite a bit we are personalizing, but not to that level. But at least in a general way, this characterized tumor or this mutation, the tumor with this mutation behave in what uh, level? We need, you need to probably understand your, the more about your tumor character to make that decision. Because Have you done any studies with uh, vitamins at all? Yeah, you know, so vitamins, so there are studies, uh, but in my lab, we didn't do it, but the vitamins also support, but uh, in basically vitamin is not so much doing to the energy source of the, you know, I'm, I'm talking more, I'm, I'm studying more into the energy of the tumor because, you know, aggressive tumors, highly metastatic tumors, they need so much of energy. You know, another thing, uh, why metabolism is important, I can briefly say it's not research. Uh, for example, you have a primary tumor or somebody has a primary tumor. Uh, that environment is very different when it goes to the bloodstream because that's a rich of oxygen. Because when it's a tumor is growing, the blood supply is reduced or they are very hypoxic tumors. But when those tumors get into the bloodstream, they are rich in tumors. Then it goes to another area like a bone or you know another another metastatic area. Their environment is very different. Their met, their their oxygen supply is different. Their you know energy source is different. So tumor has to be very flexible to survive. So that's why all the tumor, which, which is uh, detaching from the primary tumor, cannot form a metastasis because they need to have some sort of plasticity to grow in a different area. Because anytime a tumor goes to a foreign area, 
Thus, tissue will say, oh, you are not belongs to us. You cannot grow here. But to break there and to grow there, they need to have a lot of plasticity. They need to have a lot of flexibility to grow. So that's why even though thousands of cells are circulating, only a few can grow there. So we need to understand the character of those cells, you know, why they are growing when 99 others are not growing. You know. Thank you. Okay, and we'll take one last question for Dr. Benny. Anyone have it? Uh, I just have a, a quick comment, and that is that um, about uh, a year ago, I started researching about uh, male breast cancer cell lines and uh, found after a bunch of research that none existed. And in large part, it's because it is uh, such a small population to begin with, and the demand for a cell line hasn't been there uh, and the financial resources to create it haven't been there. Now with the inclusion of uh, men in um, the NCI and um, <clears throat> other organizations uh, requirements for uh, proposals for research, uh, do you think that that's gonna create some pressure for some organization to go ahead and, and create a male yes. breast cancer line? Yes, because, for example, if I write a grant now to NCI, there is a question. Um, so what type of, for example, even if I say that I will use female mice, then there is a question. There is, there is a, now we have to have a write a whole paragraph to justify why I made that decision. You know, so that is a good move because, you know, right now, you know, it, it, it allow us to include more, you know, male and, you know, female, uh, you know, populations in the study. So when more tissues are come, more resources will come definitely it will come that's a positive move that will definitely improve the you know the research in main so cancer for several years now i've been involved in a peer review of proposals for funding for research in breast cancer and the first year there wasn't a actually in the first two years there wasn't a single proposal for funding for a research project that included men um and uh the uh <clears throat> as part of my review as a layperson um that was pretty much my regular comment uh, to the point where uh most of the researchers and physicians who were part of the panel um recognized that that was probably going to be you know my my first comment on just about every uh proposal that came through uh, I should be involved again this year, and we'll see if that's changed any. Uh, some of the language has uh, started to become inclusive, from what I can tell. You know, uh, so that's also depending on the question we ask. For example, if you wanted to do, again, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, but if you wanted to ask a specific question to understand a gene, um, whether what it is doing, whether it's increasing or decreasing the tumor, you know, that time, uh, when you ask the type of very specific research questions, we want to reduce the maximum variability. You know, for example, um, if you include men and me women, uh, sorry, male and female at that point of time, maybe we need to take think about another variable. So, but if you are thinking about a treatment aspect, probably we should include both. But you know, sometimes when you want to study a function of a particular gene or a function of a particular uh, compound including more variables will complicate the results so, you know, that that's you know so um, uh, the suggestion is very important what you said but it's also depending on what type of research they are proposing that also you need to think because you bringing one variable will completely dilute the you know the, the questions and then we have to you know maybe specific to something but if you are asking about a gene function or something like that or maybe a general thing probably we, that time we have to be more better so i think uh, not every place we can include both because the thing is depending on the question so you know science excellent and okay so dr benny we appreciate all your knowledge here